it's now time to reassemble the parts. Let me show you step by step. Place the screw first, then the nut. Make sure to hold and lock on to the screw with the screwdriver. Then mount the motor on the stand and screw underneath. I made a mistake attaching the back motor casing in the wrong orientation. The two screw holes should be on the right. Let's fix that now. Reattach this gear assembly. Screw the lever back in place under the gear. There is a missing gear here. Since there is no replacement, I leave it as it is. Next, I check the capacitor. To test the capacitor, set the ohmmeter range to times 10k ohms. Short the capacitor for any existing charge. Then connect the two terminals of the tester. A resistance reading will quickly appear and goes back to infinity. This means that the capacitor is working.
I'm putting heat shrinkable tubings to insulate the capacitor terminals. I am now reinstalling the capacitor back in place. Here I'm putting back the speed selector switch in its casing. I always test the AC power cord for safety. I am now putting back the AC power cord to the plastic motor cover. I secured the motor cover temporarily with a galvanized wire to be able to solder back the wire. I no longer need to put back this wire nut. I also secured the wires with a clamp. black wire from the motor connects to one end of the AC power cord.
red, yellow, and white wires connect to the speed selector switch 3, 2, and 1 respectively. The gray wire is the other end of the AC power cord and connects to the common terminal of the speed selector switch. Now we can test the motor and it's now working. To install the back cover, you need to position its whole directly in front of the screw hole of the back motor casing by using a flashlight. Hold that position and drive the screw. Make sure you have a magnetic screwdriver or in this case I use a masking tape. I am now reinstalling the front cover, back grille, fan blade, and front grille, then the final test. 